Hello interwebs, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, and if you're anything like me, you're feeling actually pretty good and energized today because I am recording this uh, Sunday night, though you'll probably be seeing this Monday morning if you're watching it when it goes out. And earlier today, like one of the first things that I woke up to today, uh, Joe Biden announced that he was uh, exiting his uh, bid for the uh, Democratic nomination uh, for his party, uh, even though he was basically issuing at that point due to the numerous criticisms that have been levied against him. Him. The one that has been most acutely felt by him and his campaign being the fact that, you know, there's been recent political gaffes that have pointed towards mental acuity signs on his part and, and just even larger sort of concerns of whether he was a good candidate to put up against Donald Trump to actually beat him. Now, uh, since Biden has left, uh, that has left uh, him endorsing Kamala Harris, his vice president, uh, to get the nomination. And of course, there's going to be a lot of complexity uh, going forward on that. But for right now, uh, I see so many people online and in my sphere, and I know I have a little bit of a bubble, so there is that, but so many people in my sphere who have felt so demoralized and down and feeling like, man, we're about to face down, <laughs> basically feeling like we're going to get Donald Trump, uh, which might uh, lead to a much darker, uh, I, I want to say next four years, but it might have been much longer than that. Uh, but now with Harris, that feels uh, less likely, and, and there's a lot of hope and energy behind Harris herself. Uh, and I want to talk about that and that feeling and also the sort of complex feelings I have about this situation because I think this changes everything and also changes nothing. And I just want to discuss that. So for the reasons that it changes everything, it, it goes to exactly what I just said. I mean, I am feeling it too. I, 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 I feel like all of us have been feeling it. It's just... It's been one thing after the other of just feeling so overwhelmed and feeling like, man, there's this doom and gloom on the horizon. You know, I'm speaking to, you know, my, my uh, progressive leaning, left leaning, li even liberal folks uh, out there, even though I consider myself a leftist. It, it just it's it just been this like looking down this like barrel of awfulness coming in the form of Donald Trump and this growing fascism that the Republican Party represents. And and you look at Joe Biden and he represents the worst of the worst of establishment in in uh, American politics and sort of neoliberal style politics, which is just he's this guy who believes like, oh, yeah, we can we can just work it out uh, and, and, you know, and, and just compromise with the GOP and just never actually pushing back or fighting back or taking a stand in any way, just always doing this compromising establishment like we'll, we find a middle ground sort of idea that, you know, just does not work in today's politics. And all, honestly, that mindset is just constantly how you acquiesce further and further to the right. And he just embodied that completely. And, and, you know, even beyond him, just other things that frustrated me, and frustrated is like a low, <laughs> low, a low word, uh, angered me, just deeply angered me is a better word to put it, um, is like his, his Israeli policy on Palestine, like he just continually enabling Israel while shaking his fingers like, oh, I'm, they, they don't want to support them if they get across this line. But then they, when they invade Rafa, he still, you know, he doesn't send one shipment of bombs and yet they, he still sends more just a few days later. Like just that stuff is just saddening and angering and just makes you want to scream. Um, and so just seeing him take a step down, uh, though I wish it was for the reasons of like, you know, enabling the genocide happening in Palestine. I wish that had been enough to get people pissed off enough to want him to leave. Uh, certainly that was for some people, but not the voices that were listened to. It was more of the political gaffes and his appearances. But regardless, I am glad that he has stepped down and that Kamala Harris is up. And uh, just keep going on the positive train here. I have uh, a lot of faith that Kamala can bring the energy and the all that stuff that like people care about on that surface level of like, you know, getting back at Trump. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. There's a certain there's a certain excitement in me that is excited to see Kamala debate to Donald Trump and just show him up because I just know she's just a, a much stronger presence than either of them, uh, Biden or Trump, and just being generally younger. Uh, and even having slightly more, uh, you know, progressive, progressive, we'll get to that in a minute, progressive leaning views than Biden, uh, it just makes me a little bit more excited to see that. And, and, you know, there's that schadenfreude of like, yeah, fuck these fascist assholes and seeing, seeing that. Um, and, and again, there's a, there is a little bit of sense of like, she is slightly more progressive than Biden. Like he has, she has been a little bit more critical of Israel. She's been a little less, uh, critical of the pro-Palestinian, uh, 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 rallies that have been happening in the United States, particularly in college campuses where Biden was much more easily willing to sort of like play the middle ground and sort of paint them as, uh, potentially anti-Semitic and all that shit. So, you know, that is, that is 
hopeful. And I think that this energy that I, I, I personally feel like I've been just feeling so down and like, just honestly, just like dragging myself through days and trying to get work done cause, just because the weight of the world has felt omnipresent and just finally having something that feels somewhat positive, somewhat hopeful in the grander scheme of things, it, it, it means a lot. And I think that that in many ways changes so much just that energy and excitement that I see so many people have. I think it, it is, it is deeply meaningful. And I think that that can go a long way towards helping all the way into November. That being said, let me talk about how this changes nothing. And this is going to be the part that's going to get people angry at me, but I think it's very important. And I'm going to try and be pragmatic about it and, you know, not doom and gloomer or whatever that people have been painting me as. And I'll, I, I, I disagree with that painting, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But why this changes nothing? Because Kamala Harris still represents a lot of the things that my anger and frustration at Biden represents. You know, I do, I, I still stand by the fact that, I, as I've been saying even under with Biden, that like we need to be voting for Kamala. We need to vote for her because she is going to be better for many people uh, uh, under her presidential um, administration than a Trump presidential administration. Not everybody for, uh, you know, as I said, it was Biden. You know, under a Biden campaign, there are people at the border trying to cross the border that feel the same exact admin, like same exact U.S. policy that was under Trump because Biden continued many of them. Same thing. The people who are dying in Gaza, a bomb drops and then it doesn't make a difference whether it was Biden or Trump because both would probably support that that war. And in many ways, Harris represents much of the same. If you look back through Harris's history, she has very much been supportive of, you know, policies that disproportionately affect BIPOC folks in the United States. Um, so there was a policy, I believe, when she was district, made, I, think, I think it was when she was district attorney California, where, you know, there was, uh, she would target, like, uh, kids that, uh, target parents of kids who were truant from schools uh, overtly, and that would obviously very much disproportionately affect BIPOC folks. Uh, um, anyways, uh, so, like, that is who she is. And, you know, I said earlier, like, she's been slightly harder on Israel. She's been slightly more uh, supportive of the pro-Palestinian, uh, you know, like, uh, movements here in the United States, but not completely endorsing them. She's she said some things about like the uh, the uh, pro Palestinian protests. Like I endorse the emotion, but there's been things that have been said on those uh, uh, on those uh, rallies and those protests that I don't really condone. Again, leaning into the same of like they're anti-Semitic, like being a little bit more couched in it, but still leaning that way. She has also said things like Hamas needs to be eliminated. And while I am no supporter of Hamas generally, that is the the Hamas needs to be eliminated is the line that Israel uses to elicit support for its uh, uh, genocide of Palestinian people. And the Austrians is like we're just targeting. Hamas, and she continually gives weight for that. And there's and there's been decades of establishing U.S. policy of supporting Israel, regardless of what happens, because we want an ally in the Middle East where we get the where the oil is. And I don't see Kamala maybe being maybe she being a little bit harder on Israel, but not changing that. And I say all of that not to like poo-poo this excitement about Kamala Harris. As I said, I think it's worthwhile, it's important. What I am saying is that we do need to go out and vote for Kamala. It will matter towards not everybody. But it will matter towards some people, people who are generally more privileged in the United States. I think of like white, young, trans kids living in, you know, more left-leaning areas, liberal areas, blue states, will have a safer time growing up than they would under a Trump presidency, which would target so much trans health care. Myself included as a white trans woman who might have my health care taken away. That matters to me. And I know that that is a privileged position to be saying, but I, I do believe that that is worthwhile towards many people, especially people who are marginalized, you know, and, and I do think that that ultimately does make a difference. But what that does not mean is that that's the end of our engagement. This energy we are feeling, this excitement we are feeling, it needs to be shifted not to just like, yeah, get behind Kamala, but realizing when we are voting, we are choosing our enemy. We are choosing the person that we are fighting against. And Trump is a much harder person to fight because he is never going to listen. And I'm not trying to be like, push Kamala left. What I am trying to say is that what we need to be continually doing is thinking about how do we build things outside of this state system? Because for me personally, I do not believe in the United States governmental system. I do not believe that it, it is an organization built on, you know, consolidating power in the powerful. It's been up, built up since Ronald Reagan on neoliberalist policies that continually give money to the powerful. It's built up on racist institutions. It's built up on colonialism. And on all of those bases, I don't really believe in the long term of the U.S. being a thing that we need to to hold on to as a as an institution, as a state, and I don't believe in states generally as an anarchist. 
What I do believe, though, is that we need to be building these, uh, you know, communities of self-aid and self-interest and, and mutual self-aid, I'm repeating myself a little bit there, within our own communities, build those up, build solidarity, build up in our communities and local areas. Like, that's that's what we need to be doing now in in Act, not in, uh, not even against the state, but in ignorance of the state. Build our own things, build our own worlds, and only engage with the state when we either can make it work for us or we can have to fight it. And this isn't saying, like, we need a glorious revolution now. It's saying we need to build these things and in order to be able to have strength as in solidarity as community. Um, and that's going to look, and people keep asking me specifics. That's going to look different. That's going to look different for everyone's community. I look, look into, you know, if you're looking for left-leaning organizations, look for socialist groups, anarchist groups that are in your area. Research them to make sure they aren't, like, you know, <laughs> so, like uh, problematic. But, like, do that. Form groups, that community of self-interest, you know. Reach out and learn from others. Like, there's numerous different ways that they can take in, in, in your community. And so what I ultimately am saying here is... Kamala Harris, I am excited. She's giving me a little bit more hope that the next, at least the next four years of my life are going to be absolute hell. But it does make me say nothing has changed in the terms of what we need to build, what we need to have our energy focused on. And that is not trying to support Kamala. It is getting her in office and then working on the stuff that we want to build, build beyond this world that we are in now, build the systems that we want to build beyond what's going on here. And I, I you know, this is this is the same thing I heard around Biden's time. It's like, well, push Biden left. Just push Biden left. He'll be established, but, but push him left. It's like, no, 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 no. He clearly didn't. In fact, he did the same thing that people in his positions always do, which is blame the, le the further left uh, in order to say, like, it's your fault that we're not getting support or whatever. But, I mean, look at France. Look at France right now, how that the leftist stood their ground and actually, like, change things in France. And I think that's something we could, the energy we could bring to the United States right now. And I think we could even do beyond that. Cause again, maybe I'm a little bit more radical. Your mileage may vary, but I do believe that we can build something better. And you know, I, that's how that's going to look is going to look different for each one of us. Um, and I recommend you look into like, I'm an anarchist. So I recommend people like, um, uh, Andrewism has some wonderful videos on anarchy. There's also many people who are more like, uh, you know, Marxist socialist, uh, people. And then there's, there's those things all have different, uh, overlaps and views and things like that. So I just highly recommend looking into those things. Um, but that's, that's basically my thought here. So Kamala Harris makes me feel energized. I'm excited in terms of, you know, having something that feels a little bit more hopeful, but it changes nothing also in the law. And so it changes everything, changes nothing. And that's just what I want to say. Uh, but, uh, at the very least take this energy, use this moment, feel good, and let's use it to keep pushing forward because we push forward on hope, not anger, not fear. We push forward on hope. That's what's that's the fuel that sustains us longer. Anger can fuel us a little bit, but it burns us out faster. So let's keep moving on hope.